Well, thank you all for, for coming. And uh, this is the second of our series of webinars. I'm gonna let Dion, our, um, our leader, fearless leader, uh, kick us off. Thank you, Dion. No, no, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so first and foremost, uh, thank you all who uh, have decided to join us. Obviously, uh, with everything that is going on, you all have a lot of demands of your time. And so we just want to uh, let you all know how much we appreciate you joining us for this. Uh, at the end of the day, our goals is, uh, is, is simple. It's really to make sure that we are uh, providing value. Uh, that we're helping not just our members at Tech Birmingham, but quite honestly, the entire community, the entire ecosystem, figure out how do they navigate some of these changes. Uh, we're gonna be discussing a lot of topics uh, over the weeks of head. We touched on cybersecurity, uh, some of the legal ramifications um, that have been um, uh, brought to the forefront because of COVID. Um, we're going to be talking about the mental uh, health capacity or, or, or rather the ramifications of that as well. Uh, how do we make sure that we stay engaged and connected with one another? So all that just to kind of offer up a preview of what it is that we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we lean on you all to let us know what is valuable. We have our assumptions. Uh, we've talked to num numerous people uh, and uh, obviously we, we've heard um, some of the challenges that people are facing, but we need to make sure that we're sourcing as much information as, as possible, that we're making informed decisions about uh, what it is that we can bring to bear uh, to, to help you all as you navigate this. Uh, and so again, thank you. Thank you to our panelists. Uh, really looking forward to a, a great discussion uh, ahead. Uh, and Christina, I guess with that, uh, first, thank you, uh, Christina and Rebecca. Uh, obviously, you all know that they, they are the glue, glue that keeps us together. Uh, and they cover a multitude of my sins. So I appreciate you all for that. And uh, let's see, Christina, it looks like she has uh, taken off just as I am lavishing praise on her. But uh, if she does not come back, I don't know, maybe Rebecca, if you wanted to offer up a little bit about uh, the format or anything else in particular. And if not, we can just keep it moving. You can keep it moving because I'm not ready for that. Well, so, well, that just means you're gonna have to show everybody your duck. Um, and so that duck will become a star because of it. Totally fine. Oh, Christina, Christina is back. <laughs> That's all right. We were just moving along. Did you want to share anything about um, the format or just um, if people had questions just to kind of set the stage for that? All right. So we have enabled the questions feature. So you are welcome to ask our panelists any questions. I'll be moderating so that way they can focus on um, just talking um, and providing their information. Um, and so I'll, I'll pass the questions on to the speakers. You can also upvote if there's something that one of the other guests, um, you know, is asked that is interesting. We can upvote it. And we'd also like to hear some of the suggestions of the audience members. So you can also, we've also allowed the comment feature to be enabled so you can comment on each other's um, questions as well. So with that said, I will let Dion kick that off. So thank you, Christina. Uh, and just one, one quick reminder, uh, guys, if you are not a member of Tech Birmingham, make sure you uh, sign up and inquire about uh, becoming a member. Obviously, the support of not just individuals, of course, but the companies uh, allow us to put on uh, webinars uh, like this. And then hopefully once all of this has blown over, um, uh, in-person events as well. Uh, we just want to make sure that, again, that we're providing the resources and, and your support is invaluable to that. So uh, with that said, thank you again. We'll turn it over to the panelists. Really looking forward to hearing what uh, Hannah uh, and Ben have to offer up. Uh, Hannah Wallace, of course, is a, a board member of Tech Birmingham. Uh, and so uh, her grace extends long when it comes to me and my shenanigans, but a wonderful individual in the community uh, and for the organization. Of course, Ben, as you all know, uh, does an incredible amount of uh, work throughout the community. Uh, he's been a past speaker of Tech Tuesday as well, just a, a wonderful supporter of the organization. So thank you uh, for that. And we'll just get started maybe uh, doing a few uh, seconds, maybe 30 to 40 45 of introductions, starting with your name, what you do, uh, and anything that you want to offer up around, uh, up around some, uh, some of what you've uh, been uh, seeing with regard to uh, COVID and how you all are navigating, how you all are. I guess I'll start. Um, I'm Hannah Wallace. I work in engineering, engineering. Um, 
at BBVA. So we have a big campus that's in sort of the Lakeview area. Um, we have about 1,500 employees uh, nationwide as far as engineering goes. Um, and I help with sort of our workforce management, um, communications, culture, um, upskilling, and training. And uh, Ben? Yeah, so I work at uh, Protective Life. Uh, my main focus over there has been artificial intelligence. Um, though a lot of the stuff that we've been doing now, kind of a whole group of us got reassigned to kind of work on the COVID response. Um, and so that's been my primary focus over the last five weeks. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, well, let's just uh, do a little bit of level set. Um, I, I imagine that you all have been doing some work with regard to uh, remote workforce and, and before all of this took place, but just give us a, a, a contrast between then and now. What is it like day to day? What are you all just experiencing on the ground? I think for us, uh, we, we would have, we have a policy in engineering at BBVA that uh, employees can work from home one day a week so they can talk to their manager, choose their day. Um, this is quite another animal. Um, so we definitely have to prepare from a tech side and just from an engagement side uh, to get people to be able to work from home. Um, manage the mental health aspect of it. So people are able to be productive in their teams and, and, um, really just make sure the infrastructure is running for the entire bank because it's not just us within engineering. It's a whole bank that has to keep running as well. So get into some of that infrastructure. Has anything changed with regard to the infrastructure uh, that you all had in place? Have you all had to stand something up entirely new? And for uh, those who might be a part of a large organization or over uh, individuals that they now have to deploy remotely, is there anything that you can offer up in some of the insights that you're seeing? So I think that we were lucky um, because our holding bank is in Spain. So BBVA is a Spanish bank. Um, so we sort of had a heads up um, that our Spanish counterparts were, were really warning us that something might come and, you know, we may be having to have people work from home. So the very beginning of March, like the first week of March, I think our IT teams were looking at expanding our VPN circuits. Uh, so we had the capability to, to do somewhere, allow somewhere around 2,000 people um, the ability to VPN from home. Um, but our IT team got on that quickly and um, increase that fivefold. So we were lucky to be able to have a hands up and not have to either keep people in the office past when we needed to. So that's, that's one of the major things we did. And we've had to do a lot around communication. So how are people interacting? Uh, our teams were really used to WebEx, which is like Zoom, um, but that is also a global product that we use um, throughout the different countries at BBVA. So that was getting bogged down because so many countries are now working from home. Um, I think we have 95% of our workforce in the United States is now at home. So uh, we had to sort of pivot and start using Google Hangouts Meet, which is another video conferencing software. So we had to make that available to people, test it, um, communicate it to people, train people on it, um, which was super easy, but it's, it's a hard pivot when you're already, um, used to using one software and now you're working from home, you gotta try something else. But our IT teams have been amazing um, to foresee any problems. So it's gone fairly smoothly, uh, I would say. So uh, touching on that a little bit more, what caused that pivot? Um, so WebEx, uh, our main account is ran uh, through Spain, through Telefonica. So um, if all of Spain is at home, and then our other countries, Mexico, everybody else is at home. It's, it's hard to, uh, that, you know, it was just bad quality in the calls. And we're already used to using um, virtual, like, video conferencing so much that now we were, you know, really increasing that capacity. And it just didn't have the bandwidth. So if we could easily find something else and um, give people the, the quality of the tools they needed, then, yeah, they were able to do that and did a great job at it. Fantastic. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, ben, just following up on that uh, yeah. kind of level set, what, what, what have you been seeing? What have you all, uh, what, what, what were you all doing and uh, what, what's changed now? Yeah, I mean, I think you look at what we were doing previously, and even though we've got, you know, six, seven offices around the country, the majority of the work, majority of the meetings, they were all done in person. Uh, so there may have been a phone call coming in, but we didn't have 
we were using, we're still using Microsoft Teams, but we weren't necessarily using the video functionality out of it. Um, if we were using it, it was definitely for the audio side. So a lot of people, there wasn't a uh, understanding of what video meant and what was involved with video. Uh, and then we immediately threw everyone work remote. Uh, so we had 3,400 people in the company. And right now I just pulled the count and we have everyone but 240 essential employees that are currently working from home. Um, so, you know, getting everyone to transition over and understanding that there's the added benefit of running video and how do you get them on video. Uh, we had a lot of, we've been on, moving a transition to everyone over to BDI anyway. Um, so we were in the middle of that transition, which was nice because the majority of people, probably about 99% were already on it, but a lot of them didn't have devices to access it through the company. They had, you know, wise units on their desktops, little boxes. So how do you get them over to utilize, you know, those devices, whether it's a Chromebook, a personal device, you know, how do you kind of make that transition? And that was uh, kind of a ad hoc, you know, here, let's find whatever we can make this work. Um, the other part there, we were in the middle of transitioning from Skype over to Teams. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but Skype has end of life in 2021. So we were trying to make that transition early and we hadn't even started on it really. So we had to basically take our transition plan from Teams and shorten that time span into about a day or two and just shove everyone on it. And it's a lot of training that was involved, which was definitely interesting. Uh, went from, you know, we had maybe a pamphlet to we put out three or four videos of how to utilize it. We splattered everything across all of our internal sites, sent out multiple emails, we're hosting webinars, we're hosting, you know, genius bars, how can we help you out? Um, and the same approach we took with actually deploying hardware. Uh, internally in the office, we have 1,700 people in our Birmingham location, and we had to get every single one of them home. And for the people that had equipment, that's fantastic, but we had a lot of people who didn't. So deploying all the equipment and getting it home, checking the equipment out, uh, getting it set up at their house, helping them understand what's the difference between HB, or USB-C and HDMI or a DVI, uh, that's, you know, lots of fun. Um, a lot of people, they don't have to, you know, the blue cable means a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Um, so that's a, it's a transition. It's a lot of things that our help desk wasn't necessarily, you know, ready for in some ways. So we allocated some of the people from IT who are a little bit more senior, a little bit more understanding with some of the details regarding this to assist with that. Um, cause the help desk on our daily basis, a lot of what they deal with is, you know, application support, basic, you know, support for the equipment that we have. And we had probably a good. 500 people that were actually on their own personal devices. So how do you support those personal devices? And how do you have the expertise to do that? And so we had to pull in a lot of senior level people to actually assist with that who had the know-how. Um, we have a lot of people that are on Macs and Macs are not supported by the company. That's their personal device. So we've had a lot of trainings on Macs for a lot of people right now, which has been kind of fun to see. Yeah, well, uh, that definitely sounds like a, a problem with the company that is not supported by Max, but I say that as a Mac fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm currently uh, calling you from an iPhone on my MacBook. So, like, you know. There we go. All right, all right, we get it. <laughs> Dion, we do have a question from the audience. Um, sure, this sure. is from Patrick McClendon. He wants to know from what you've heard and experienced so far, does the Birmingham Metro have the telecom infrastructure to support this shift to telework. Have, have your uh, have your employees had hiccups with uh, with logging on to, I guess the the internet? Is there the bandwidth there? I think we noticed some slowdown in the beginning, um, but but I, I think we're pretty good now at just kind of educating people. If there's a problem, it's probably your Wi-Fi. It's probably not the VPN connection. That has been one of ours, trying yeah. to educate people when they call the health desk and complain. Uh, but Ben, you go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was going to agree. I said the same thing. I think initially we definitely saw some slowdown. Uh, Microsoft Teams is having issues kind of like WebEx, where they, current, they were kind of intermittent video options and so things like that. But probably last middle of last week, things definitely evened out. We haven't seen any major issues as far as connection. Uh, so, uh, and thanks for uh, that, that question, uh, Patrick. Um, uh, also, uh, Haley uh, Kendrick uh, offered up that it sounds like you all need to uh, hire some more help desk 
specialist. I imagine <laughs> Innovate Birmingham would be a great source of that talent. Just uh, if I <laughs> had to make an assumption there. <laughs> uh, so kind of kind of sticking with that, actually, uh, Ben, about the education yeah. piece. Did you all have something that was, in essence, ready to go, but you all had to scale it up? Or was a lot of this just ad hoc, let's figure out what works, let's go ahead and triage this now? And if so, have you all been able to codify some of that into a plan, a playbook that you all could roll out in the unfortunate event of some other disruption? Yeah, I think we've, we kind of came up with a pretty a playbook pretty early on to understand how we want to approach it. And then we had to very quickly deviate. Um, you know, it, it, what's the, the statement, something along the lines of everyone has a plan until they get to the middle of battle uh, and then it all goes out the window. Uh, so we had an idea and I think we've, you know, iterated on the idea a couple of times. Um, we had some stuff, like I said, we were kind of going BDIs anyway, or having going BDIs anyway. So the transition from, from a software perspective to going work from home was relatively easy. We just didn't have devices for 3,400 people. Uh, you know, I think that was, that's something where that's, that's changed our mindset kind of going forward is from a business continuity perspective, how do you make sure that if this does occur again, we can send 3,400 people home in a day. And we've taken in a lot of the ideas that we've, you know, come, up, come across so far, uh, definitely pulling in resources from other people. Uh, we're lucky enough where, you know, uh, our parent company, Daiichi Life out of uh, Japan, this is something they had to do a little bit earlier than us. So there are definitely some learnings from that organization as well that we're able to benefit off of. And I think we're going to kind of be able to leverage a lot of things for the next time, or hopefully there's not a next time, but if there were, uh, we'll have a lot in place at that point. Uh, thank you, Ben. Uh, kind of the same thing to, to you. Uh, did you all have anything that you were able to rely on? Uh, and for, for organizations, maybe not as large as BBVA, uh, is there anything that this experience has taught you that they should definitely be considering? Uh, even from a management standpoint, somebody who is over the deployment of these remote teams, or from an individual standpoint, I need to make sure that I have this in place in case something like this crops up again. Yeah, you know, I think that our business continuity team and our management in engineering has done such a great job, especially being prepared um, ahead of time. Like I said, you know, listening to Spain, we knew there would be a delay on laptops from Wuhan. So we, you know, tried to do everything to, to get them here so we could distribute them for people who needed to go home. Um, so really it would be to plan early. And I, I know it may seem like a little bit of panic in the beginning, but you have to be prepared. I mean, I don't think anybody thought that we'd be sending 6,000 plus yeah. people home um, <laughs> for the entire month of March, but um, I, I'm really glad that they, they acted quickly and um, you know, we already had a good plan in place. So I guess we'll all know now from now on to be prepared <laughs> for something like this, unfortunately, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and Ben, were you um, about to chime in? I saw you highlight for a second there. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I definitely agree with everything she said. Uh, so, uh, in terms of, if, oh, was some was that you, Christina? Yes, yes. Yes. We have another question from the audience. Haley Kendrick sure, sure. Uh, wants to, uh, is asking. One thing we are learning is in this non-voluntary remote work transition is that a lot of students and staff don't have a home office set up. Oh my gosh. Uh, so oh my gosh. Uh, 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 no, you, you have to show us who was calling and oh you have God. to answer it. All right. Should we answer it online? Here we go. Unknown. It's probably one of our beloved members. Indeed. Um, all right. So if you don't, uh, even if we provide tech equipment without a dedicated work space uh, and focus, folks are struggling. Um, are you adjusting expectations for productivity and providing support outside of technical equipment and setup of home office? That's a great question. Yeah. Um, ben, do you want to take a stab at that one? Yeah, I, I think there's an understanding that, you know, without a home office, without, you know, the setup they have at the office, that there's going to be a productivity hit. Uh, and that's something that our managers have been instructed to take into account. Uh, we're still waiting to see what that looks like. Uh, obviously, you know, when you look at positions like call center representatives or, uh, you know, support groups, you're not sure exactly what kind of hit that is going to take. Uh, so a lot of the metrics, even though we are just monitoring, uh, we're not really, we're not as focused right now on, you know, 
truly saying, hey, you're not hitting your numbers, but we are monitoring at this point in time to understand. I think the biggest problem with a lot of people in their area, they may not have had a home office, um, but we were lucky enough where they actually had internet. Uh, internet was not something we were concerned with. Uh, almost everyone that we had had an internet connection. That was definitely, we lucked out because of that. Um, but the home office, whether it's a dining room table, whether it's, you know, just a bedroom, whatever it might be, I think a lot of people are trying to figure out what that means to them. Um, I know I repurposed a bedroom and that's kind of the way I've gone. Uh, and so they're having to understand what that means, where they work best. And we've put a lot of resources in place to help them understand that. Um, so we have a lot of work from home tips, uh, a lot of suggestions on where to set things up, uh, understanding, you know, all right, if you're, we have these devices called Meraki devices that create a VPN connection, you know, they have to be wired in. So if they have to be wired in and you need, and you can't be next to your router because your router's in the living room, let us help you get like a hundred foot cable so we can throw it into a bedroom so you can be more productive in the bedroom. Uh, so things like that of just understanding how someone works best in a home environment is drastically different. We try and help with that, but it's, there's a struggle. Thank you for that. Uh, Hannah, anything to follow up on, on your end regarding that? Yeah, I think um, one thing we've done that has been beneficial is uh, implement like a weekly communication from our CIO. Um, and we developed that communication with him um, based on some responses we get from a survey we've sent out. So we're basically asking very open-ended questions. How's it going? You know, what are your challenges and what are your best practices? And then we share those widely. And that communication on our Google Plus, like uh, uh, social media, you know, thing we have going on. And then um, uh, we allow people to sort of talk back and forth and give that feedback about what's working for them. So I think that that's really important. Uh, we figured out, you know, at the beginning, it was sort of hardware we had to address. Um, right now, uh, we're seeing teams want more support. So, so how can we support our managers to know how to manage those teams and set the right expectations as far as productivity? We know people have kids at home right now, and that's really, really hard. So, you know, we've given the suggestion of just being really open with your manager saying, you know, things might be interrupted. I know I'm not going to be available at these times, you know, and we, we hope that managers are being accommodating to that um, because that's what we have to focus on first right now is keeping people healthy and supporting their families. And then, you know, we'll get the work done. It might be at a weird time, but uh, it'll happen. Uh, so I, I want to follow up on that because you had mentioned something earlier when we were kicking this off about um, the, the mental health aspect of this, right? Like, how do you keep people engaged? How do you keep morale high? Uh, is there anything that's starting to rise to the surface that you're, that you're seeing um, uh, th that would be helpful for others to know? Uh, just what, what, what are the observations that, that you've been making with regard to that now? I think um, our workforce is forces so... Um, so broad, we have so many different types of people. We have people with a lot of kids. We have people with kids are gone and in college, you know, so um, finding a way to support everyone is tough, but we've been doing it through, people are hosting like happy hours. So our team has a happy hour once a week, you know, at 5 p.m. on Thursday and people get together and chat and have a drink. So um, we've, we also have a ton of resources available through our talent and culture, our HR partners, you know, um, assistance line so you can call and, and talk with somebody if you need to. So um, yeah, we've just been monitoring the results from that survey and, and seeing what people are needing. We know that people, some people are lonely. I mean, they have said that they are now lonely because work is their outlet and that's, um, that's how they uh, you know, talk to people and, and get that interaction every day. So we definitely encourage video chats and um, we'd encourage, if you have a work best friend that you have coffee with every day, then have coffee with them for your video every day, you know, figure it out, have a phone call if video is being slow, but <laughs> um, definitely make sure to interact with them. So just trying to share those suggestions because we can't come up with them all, but the, the employees definitely know what works. Can I add something? Uh, so, absolutely. Yes, Christina. So Tech Birmingham, we've addressed this early on. We've started having virtual breakfast clubs on Thursday mornings. Um, we also had a, a few weeks ago, we had a virtual cocktail hour with our tech bees, our volunteer team. Um, so we're going to continue to provide some more uh, opportunities for people to socialize. I've been looking at ways where you could do virtual board games with other people. That mm -hmm. might be for anyone who likes board games. Let me know. We'll try to figure something out. 
Um, but yesterday, Rebecca and I thought maybe we could have a virtual speakeasy. So uh, we're going to try to figure that one out and uh, provide that for our members. Uh, you know, uh, to, to that, Christina, so something that I came across, uh, I'm, I'm probably late as always, uh, Netflix party. Have you guys heard about that? Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, yeah. yeah. We, we need to do a Tech Birmingham uh, uh, Netflix party, so. Hey, hey, Tiger let's, King. Let's yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> we could do a Tech Birmingham Tiger King watch party. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I think we just, all right, so so let it be done. All right, here we go. I'm not responsible for what happens to Tiger King. <laughs> yeah, it was it? Yeah. It'll be after five o'clock, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sierra says yes to the board game. All right, cool. We got we got two ideas. Good stuff. Uh, uh, ben, anything you want to chime in about that with regard to uh, the morale and uh, just kind of keeping the team upbeat and feeling supported? Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest things, kind of echoing uh, what Haley had mentioned, uh, our CEO actually sends a daily email. Uh, so we have a daily email coming from leadership. It's basically like, hey, here's what we know. Here's what's happening here's where we are, uh, 110% transparency. And I think that has been a comforting factor. Uh, we have a, you know, a page on the very, our internal website is called Prism, which is where they go to, every employee starts off as their homepage. And so there's a giant information center there that has all the information from, you know, learning and development, uh, all the culture stuff, you know, how to run meetings, all that other stuff. But, you know, just the social support as well, uh, like, the same suggestions that Hannah had where it's like have coffee still with people, have your happy hours, do video calls with your team, like find your ways to socially engage. And we have a survey that goes out every week with people just to kind of check in and see where they are. Um, but I think that that email from our CEO and our leadership team where it's basically just like, this is 110% what is happening and what we know today. I think that's been one of the biggest benefits because you, you see an email from him and it's like, all right, I know, I know you're paying attention. You understand what's happening. And you value what we're doing, even if we are in a weird situation. Uh, fantastic. Uh, so, uh, kind of a uh, somewhat of a tangent, uh, but this goes back on a topic that we were touching on earlier, especially for you all. But I think that this maps over to an organization, regardless of size. You have various units. You have IT. You have management. Everybody is trying to get on the same page, figure out who needs what. Uh, you mentioned, Ben, that some individuals might not have uh, laptops to take home. Okay, well, mm -hmm. we need to coordinate with this group over here. And then, of course, you got to bring in help. How, how in the world did you all coordinate all of that? Uh, and, and did you, again, did you have something to fall back on? Or was this a completely new experience that you all had to figure out as you, in, uh, as you engaged? Yeah, we, uh, so we had an asset you know, management system, obviously, where we keep track of all the hardware that exists in the company. So we know where everything is, you know, who has what, uh, but at the same time, deploying of hardware. So if we need to take a, you know, give somebody a Chromebook or give somebody a laptop, uh, that's usually a, it's a process. So how do you take that and scale that up to be able to send out, you know, thousands upon thousands of devices to all these different people and have them set up for everyone? Uh, so we kind of, we took the existing process and just put, you know, some more people at it, found some ways to improve the efficiency of the deployment process and just, you know, just went at it. Uh, we had, we we're lucky where we had a group of about 15 to 20 dedicated people who were very, very, the top end of IT who just went in and just put their heads down to figure out all the solutions of how to deploy this. And we've got a great person uh, who actually manages all the asset side who assisted with the hardware. Um, and so we lucked out. Uh, we know that we did ask people who had personal devices though, who were willing to work from like a MacBook or their own personal laptop to do that. Uh, there's definitely a familiarity with a BDI. You can access it from anywhere. You can access it from an iPad, a phone, whatever. So that wasn't an issue, but we found that with the limited number of hardware and obviously the supply constraints from China coming right now with new hardware coming in, uh, we actually had to be in a position where we started to have people like, Hey, if you have your own laptop, please use it. We'll work on replacing it later with your own equipment. And then we got to a point where we just had people start taking the equipment off their desk. Uh, so we would check out the equipment on their desk and actually they would go home with that. And actually I have two of my monitors from my desk right now that I just, they're like, hey, I'm taking these with me. Here's a piece of paper, let me sign out. My manager signs it, here you go, out the door you go. Uh, and that was kind of the approach we had to take at some point where it's just, you have to actually you know, allocate equipment that had been historically in the building to go home. 
That's fascinating. Thank you. Uh, Hannah, what, what about on um, you all side? How, how are you all just managing all this uh, cross team collaboration uh, just to kind of make sure you all are moving forward with this? Yeah, I think it's pretty defined um, where we are. So we have a U.S. business continuity team um, and it's representatives from each department and we meet twice a week and have a phone call, you know, and say mortgage is having a problem with this. You know, these are our IT issues, you know, that sort of thing. So that team is already in, in place and, you know, our business, we have people specifically assigned to just business continuity. That's their job. So, um, once everything started going down, they, they spun up the meetings and the representatives know that they're there to um, say what's going on in their area. So I think that's the best outlet and then it trickles down from there. Um, has there been anything that you all tried that just did not fly over or it was a disaster or it, you know people were still on the uptake? Did you all have to do any pivots? Of course, what you are at liberty to share. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I think it's been a little bit of a struggle for some of our agile teams. Um, they're so used to having that stand up together. It's just kind of giving them the tools, you know, now you can use a virtual Kanban board, board that kind of thing. Um, so I, honestly, there hasn't been a huge disaster. You know, we've had, you know, small troubles with WebEx and we've learned how to pivot from there, but I think it's, it's gone pretty smoothly so far. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We might be here yeah. a while. Yeah, knock on some wood, fingers yeah. crossed, right? Yeah, <laughs> sorry if I just jinxed you. So, <laughs> Ben, I might as well jinx you too, man. Uh, what, what's going on over there? <laughs> no, it, we've been very lucky as well. Uh, you know, from a software perspective, almost everything we had was virtual, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, it was always, it was definitely more on the hardware side for us that we ran into issues and really, the customer support angle was probably the toughest one uh, because those people, it, that group was used to using dual monitors, having an Abaya phone. So a phone system is actually integrated with everything. So how do you get them to work from home uh, and let them be productive to help continue to serve our customer base? And I think that's, that's, that was probably the hardest group that we had. And we had to kind of figure out what we were going to do there. And we didn't have equipment that was, you know, really designed to allow them to do that initially or enough equipment. So um, we had to do a lot of pivoting there, but we eventually got to that point. Fantastic. Um, ha have you all seen uh, uh, any, I guess, etiquette start to emerge, right? Like everybody is going virtual now, right? Like, so how do you all, how do you manage that, right? If you're on a phone call, how do you get people to chime in or not, not do the crosstalk? I mean, there's a, there's a whole new world we have to appreciate. So any insights into that? Yeah, I, I think from our perspective, uh, there's a couple things. Definitely crosstalk is an issue. I think video definitely enables a lot of people to understand, all right, is somebody about to talk? It kind of creates that whole meeting room atmosphere. So we encourage all of our meetings to actually utilize video now. Um, the other piece there is we try and encourage people to somewhat, you know, put something decent on, uh, don't wear like a raggedy sweatshirt, uh, more along the lines, not so much that we're customer facing, but it changes your mindset a little bit. Um, so it puts you in the same mindset that you have when you go to the office, um, at least putting on, you know, you know, a polo or a, a nicer t-shirt or something like that. It, there's a definite change in perspective, I think. And so we encourage people to continue to do that. Definitely not mandatory by any means. Uh, I mean, I think I, I posted on my Instagram a while ago. It's talking about, uh, you know, wearing a, a button down on top, shorts on the bottom, kind of the work from home mullet. Um, but that's kind of the idea where, like, at least, you know, you want to be presentable, and that kind of creates this whole atmosphere. Um, but there's definitely a lot to just meeting etiquette in general that kind of changes uh, the crosstalk, obviously. But definitely uh, understanding don't, like, sit there and eat your lunch while you're on a video chat. Um, that's it's not really, uh, it doesn't really look good and no one looks good eating a salad. So just don't. <laughs> um, but I think that's, uh, there's definitely some things that people have had to learn and we've kind of put out some information guidelines. just like, Hey, here's some suggestions, make your meeting run a little bit easier. And I think encouraging participation because a lot of people who, unless you specifically call on them in a video room, they may not actually call, they may not actually speak. So acknowledging that like you would in just a typical room where somebody may be too shy or may not, Feel comfortable. Uh, you have to almost encourage a little bit more with people in a virtual room. 
That's great insight. Thank you, Ben. Uh, and I, I, I guess I should apologize. I think I was eating when I was on a meeting with uh, Christina and Rebecca, uh, if I can't recall. I, 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 it was somebody else. That's even worse then, right? <laughs> so, Paul's forgiven. Uh, we do uh, have a few <laughs> questions that, um, sure, sure. that we'd like to to ask um, our panelists. And also, I did start a another poll just to find out what people are using, um, what platforms they're using for communications and for remote work. Um, so if you can, you know, this is for the audience. Um, they can participate in that. Um, all right, so Doris wants to know what tool do you find is best for rem remote task reporting? Um, she is part of a team that, a uh, compliance team for a real estate company in 29 states, and there's lots of moving pieces and parts. So um, we're actually, we've got several questions about specific tools. So I know you, uh, Ben mentioned Microsoft Tools. Are there other uh, platforms that your companies have employed um, to, to keep all of these projects um, the project management in place. Yeah, let's tackle that one. Um, maybe Hannah, if you want to kind of talk about the re, uh, reporting tools that you all are using or any recommendations. Yeah, um, I would imagine if you're in 29 states, you probably have some sort of remote tool that you're already using. Um, so I would sort of analyze it and make sure you're not feeling, you know, kind of like because you're not seeing people, people aren't doing what they're supposed to do, that sort of thing. Not, not saying that that's the case, but, you know, sometimes we have to make sure, uh, you know, we're, we're trusting our teams. Um, but, uh, you know, because we are in various stages of waterfall and agile, um, we do use Kanban boards, online Kanban boards for a lot of our teams. So uh, that may be helpful. Um, and then most of our teams have video chats um, in the beginning. So, you know, a stand up. So everybody's reporting what they're doing in the beginning of the day. And then some teams also actually have one at the end of the day to say what they have done. Um, and that's also to, of course, answer any questions and solve any issues that may be coming up. So that's, I think that's all the, the tools suggestions that I have. I feel like a, a dummy because I've been saying Kanban all this time. Oh, I think it's, I don't know. I may be saying it wrong. <laughs> People say it all different ways. I, I can't pronounce it. I eat during Zoom meetings. Like, I'm, there, there's no saving me, guys. What the hell? <laughs> uh, ben, any uh, recommendations yeah. or tools to follow up with? Uh, well, I mean, I, obviously, we're using Skype and Teams. We're obviously a Microsoft shop. So, um, we are using uh, Azure DevOps as our uh, agile tool. Uh, so we do our deployments through there as well as having our Kanban board on there as well. So all of our teams, all of our IT teams do the work tracking in there uh, and we do reporting off of that as well. So we have an understanding of, you know, what's happening, where it exists in the project, where the project is and everything like that. Uh, we are, some teams are using Microsoft Planner uh, or I think, you know, we have a couple, we have one group I think that's using Asana, which is also a pretty good tool. Um, I think anything that involves a uh, some type of checklist or Kanban style board that's like a Trello or something like that is definitely the route to go for us. And we've found a lot of success with uh, Azure DevOps because we can customize that as well as do our deployments out of there. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Kareem, thank you for joining us. I see you in the comments. You have to follow up and let us know what you're eating. Uh, it's only appropriate. Uh, Christina, do we have another question? Yes, we do. Um, so this one is from Larry Tribble, and he wants to know, how much are you focused on replicating the in-office experience to the work from home environment? What strengths of the remote tool set can improve work from home meeting culture over in-office meeting culture? That's fascinating. Um, Hannah, do you want to tackle that one? Um, sure. I think uh, Ben has said this before, but we highly encourage people to use their video conferencing just to sort of make it feel like, you know, you're still in the video and you're not like playing with your dog and because nobody can see you because you're just on a video call. Yeah, well, it's just also great. But um, so I think just making sure that you're seeing people, making sure you're responding to chats within a specific time frame. But I think one of the biggest things that has been successful to, for us is 
making sure your team knows what's going on with you. Do you need to take off? You know, will you be out for two hours because your kids have to do this certain thing for school? So just just communicating that. Um, so your manager or your scrum master, or whoever, doesn't think you've just dropped off the face of the earth for three hours because they can't see you. You know, um, so just try to build that trust and open communication has has worked for us. Uh, great. Thank you for that. Uh, ben, same question. Any follow up? Yeah, I think just to kind of add to that, I would also ask, you know, how much do you really want to replicate the in office? A, you know, that would be the question I would pose. Um, you know, obviously in office has been it's the way we operate in an office environment is very ideal to that office environment. Now that we're not in the office, there's a new norm that you have to find and then that may not exactly look like what's in the office. So replicating what you have there may not be the best option. Uh, so I think taking a little bit of a different approach and different perspective is figuring out what works best for a work from home scenario. Uh, you know, obviously people right now, as Hannah mentioned, you know, kids are home. Uh, there people have dogs, feel different things. So the way you work and operate is going to be drastically different. So how do you optimize that? And I wouldn't tie it back to, you know, how you work in an office. I think that's the wrong approach. I think it's figuring out how you work best at home is the right approach. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Ben. And uh, for those who were wondering, uh, Kareem is eating strawberry cake from Edgar's. So I'm jealous. <laughs> I know, I was about to comment to Kareem. Kareem, <laughs> send me some. I know, and jealousy washes <laughs> over <know>. Ben. <laughs> oh. All that's right. Great. So let's see. Um, this is from Anonymous. Uh, this person has been working from home for six years and feels that they are more productive from home. Have you noticed uh, some productivity benefits um, from this transition um, to working from home? The hell yes for me, but uh, <laughs> I am not one of the panelists. So uh, Ben, what about you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I found more benefit working from home prior to everyone else working from home. Uh, I was, I, I would spend a day once a week, once every other week working from home just to knock out email and to get things done because I was way more productive. But now that everyone else is working from home, it is not as productive uh, as it used to be anyway for me. Um, that being said, yeah, I think we do see some people that, you know, there are some benefits from working from home. I also think you see people work longer too, which is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, but it seems like a lot of people are working longer hours and that may do just because during the day they're taking different breaks. Uh, but yeah, I think we are seeing a little bit of a productivity gain for some people and a decrease for others. Yeah, I think our, our, um, I, I've been really, really surprised by some of our past managers, uh, our directors who never you know really bought in or supported the our work from home policy that we have are now like yes how can I hire people who completely work from home I mean stunned stunned me I'm like yeah we can open up our whole recruiting pool now so um I I, I really think that people are definitely seeing the productivity um value uh they, they like not having to commute um and then uh but we do also see like Ben said people are working longer hours. And that may be part of the pandemic, you know, because we're having to support the infrastructure of the bank. But, um, and also, because where else are you gonna go? <laughs> you know, you gotta stay home and work. So um, as long as that can be balanced and people are still, you know, at some point in the future able to, you know, be social and be with other people, but also be able to work from home a little more. We've, we've seen really good benefits from it, really, really positive outcomes from it. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for that, Hannah. And uh, Christina, it looks like we have, um, I guess that would be the last question. Uh, we've got actually just one more. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Patrick McClendon also is asking, how are you addressing cybersecurity risks for your companies um, from this working from home scenario that we're all in? That is a good question. Uh, we actually touched on a good bit of that uh, last week, but we'd we'll love for uh, maybe our uh, panelists now, Ben, if there's anything you can offer up around that. Um, you know, outside of the normal, uh, we use two-factor authentication for access all of our uh, all of our systems. Uh, so that's continuing. 
obviously this opens up some additional risk uh, just due to the fact that a lot of the hardware is no longer inside of our control. Uh, it's now outside. But at this point, we haven't done anything specific to address that. Uh, we haven't seen any issues coming from that. All of our desktops are virtual. So, you know, we do kind of limit down some of that due to that, uh, that concern. But at this point, we haven't done anything drastically um, to address any situations. And Hannah, I imagine that, yeah, you all have probably already just been on lockdown given that you're a bank, but uh, yeah. has, has anything changed now uh, to uh, Patrick's question? Um, I think that the only thing that he probably didn't mention is we've started um, educating people on what they can do uh, to secure their homes. So, you know, do you have Alexas everywhere listening to everything you're saying, that sort of thing? Um, so, you know, there are different levels of security needed for different jobs, of course, in the bank. Um, but uh, I think once a week we have sort of a primer that goes out to, so people can start thinking about are their homes secure because now we have all of our devices and all of their data in our home, in their homes. So something we definitely have to consider. Absolutely, thank you. And um, uh, Rebecca, thank you for uh, reminding me. Uh, we do have a recording of that last week's panel where we go into detail about some of the cybersecurity implications uh, of this uh, new move to re remote work. And uh, I believe that is on our YouTube channel. Is that correct, Christina? Uh, she is mouthing yes. Uh, that should be youtube.com slash tech So make sure you go and uh, check that out as well. Yes. Uh, yes. I got it right. Yes, you got it right. It should be on the YouTube. Perfect. All right, I'm ending the poll for us. We've got great participation in the poll. And so, as you're doing that, we actually have a, a question uh, from our friend, uh, Ms. Kemp. Um, let's see, yeah. do you have, yes. Can you uh, review that one for us? Sure, all right. Katya Kemp asks, do you think after this pandemic, is gone that companies will uh, make telecommute as their main way of working. What about you, Hannah? What are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, you know, I, I don't see how it won't be more prevalent. I don't think, I think uh, our younger workforce already sort of knew the benefits of, of working from home. And of course, this is not this is not stating anything that BBVA will do in the future. But um, I, you know, I don't see a lot of our managers haven't seen a ton of negatives. So, so I, I don't see how it can't be more prevalent, honestly. What about you, Ben? Yeah. I think from our perspective, obviously uh, unofficial completely, um, definitely not the protective stance at this point. We have yet to figure out what our stance is going to be going forward, but I think this has opened up the door for more people to work remotely. Um, historically, we've not necessarily been open to that. Um, so I think this will definitely open that door for people. Uh, I think we could be in a situation where we might even just have some people that continually rotate work home. So we might have some people that work from home and then, you know, for a couple of weeks, and then there's a group that works in the office and they rotate around every couple of weeks. Um, that could be another situation that we're currently evaluating. There are different opportunities for sure, uh, but I definitely think this has opened up the door for a lot more people to work from home uh, after seeing the benefits and after seeing the way that it hasn't necessarily impacted things the way that we thought it might have. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you for that. Uh, Christina, were you about to uh, say something? I said that was just a great question. Um, I, I think, you know, this has definitely opened up um, you know, just kind of flipped the the culture of the in office culture on its side or on its head, and so it's um, you know I think opened up a lot of opportunities for everybody. But I was going to share the results. I'm sharing the results with the poll, and so and it looks like as you pull that up, I just wanted to say uh, thanks to Katia for being an awesome uh, member of Tech Bees, the volunteer yes. crew that. Christina had mentioned uh, earlier and uh, that Rebecca does a wonderful job of leading up. So thanks uh, for taking time to participate. Right, well, um, it looks like Zoom is by far um, one of the tools that most everybody here has started employing. Um, in second, we've got Slack and Microsoft Teams comes in third. So, um, I'll, and then, there's 24% said others. So 
um, I'd love to hear what those other tools are. We're always looking for, uh, okay, so someone put Cisco WebEx Teams. And um, so we'd love to hear, you know, more about what what's working for you. Um, the last thing I want to do is we do have a winner for our, we have a gift card that we want to give away as a thank you for all of you coming and listening. So we've got a winner and that person, I pulled it up, at Melvia Walton. Walton. So Melvia, we will get your email address and we'll email you so that we can get your address to send you a gift card for Santos Coffee. They have two locations, one in downtown and one in Hoover. So you can go get your curbside coffee at one of those two <laughs> locations. Awesome. Congratulations, Melvia. Um, good stuff. Well, um, with that said, we are at 1255. Uh, I think this is a good opportunity to go ahead and start wrapping us up um again thank you uh, of course christina and rebecca uh, really really appreciate the great work that you all have done um uh, pulling this webinar series together in very short order um i think the participation is indicative of the value uh, that, that we're bringing uh, of course that does not happen without the panelists so ben thank you uh hannah thank you really Really appreciate you all setting time aside for this, especially given all the demands um, on your schedules right now. So thank you all. Uh, and of course, thank you to the participants for spending roughly an hour with us and uh, putting up with our antics. But hopefully we were also able to give you all um, some good insights and uh, topics of discussion as you all uh, get together with your respective teams. And as always, please let us know what we can do uh, to continue delivering value. Let us know what you all are thinking, what you're hearing, the observations. Uh, we wanna make sure that uh, we're, we're doing right by the community and, and um, that we're offering up practical advice and solutions and the experts who can really help us navigate uh, these new times ahead. Again, make sure you sign up uh, for a member of Tech Birmingham. Uh, that's techbirmingham.com and uh, be on the lookout for the newsletter. And of course, the recording of this webinar, we'll be sending that out soon as well, in addition to a survey. We wanna get your thoughts. Uh, let us know uh, what we can be doing better. Uh, quite honestly, we wanna make sure that we're always uh, taking this thing up a notch. And so we can't do that without you and your feedback. Um, so that is all for today. And I guess we will go ahead and start letting you all exit. Thanks again for participating. And uh, we'll see you all next week uh, for the third installment of our webinar series. Thank you. <laughs>